Hi everyone, welcome back to these processes from the Project Management Body of Knowledge. This one in particular is Planning Cost Management. So where does this fit in the overall scheme of things? As you can see, we are in the planning process group. So now we're, we're putting together that project management plan and all of the bits and pieces that go into it, all of these project risk, quality, resources, and of course, cost. But before we go into planning our cost detail, we have to figure out the process that we're going to go about to do it. So what is the framework and what are the techniques that we are going to use and have that outlined in our planning cost management document. So the plan cost management is the process of defining how the project costs will be estimated, budgeted, managed, monitored and controlled. It's the how. How are we going to do it? What is the process? And why do we do it this way? because uh, it provides guidance and direction on how the project costs will be managed throughout the project. So we can always refer to this document if we need to know how we're supposed to go about things. The cost management planning effort occurs early in the project planning and sets the framework for each of the cost management processes so that the performance of the processes will be efficient and coordinated. We know what to expect. It's our plan for this particular area. The cost management processes and their associated tools and techniques are documented in this cost management plan. It's you know, how we're going to go about it. What tools are we going to use? The cost management plan is a component of the overall project management plan, of course. So this will feed back up into our project management plan and create that entire, that large document with all of these different components. Inputs, tools and techniques and outputs for planning cost management. We've got our project charter for our high level view, our project management plan for the more detailed uh, implementations of our schedule management plan and risk management plan, EEFs and OPAs. Tools and techniques, of course, we've got our favorite that we see almost every time is expert judgment, uh, data analysis of the different things that we'll need to look at, and meetings to, to gather that information and disperse that information as well. And the output that we're looking at is the cost management plan itself. As you can see, the planning cost management has a big input back into the project management plan. The inputs, let's look at them in more detail. The project charter, as we know, is that document that initiates and kicks off our project. And it has that high level view of what our project is going to be like, and including a high level view of the cost. So it provides the pre-approved financial resources from which the detailed project costs can be developed from there. The project charter also defines the project approval requirements. So who, who was the project sponsor? Who are the stakeholders? And who are those people that will influence the management of these project costs going forward? Who's actually paying for this project, in other words? The project management plan will have an input as well. Of course, we might need the schedule management plan and risk management plan to see how we manage these particular items, how we're we managing the schedule. That might impact our how we manage the cost. And same with our risks. And have we seen any risks? And have we seen any changes to our schedule? And that will definitely impact the cost as well. Enterprise environmental factors. Of course, we'll see organizational culture and structure. How is the work done? Is it done formally? Are there you know, certain processes that we need to go through? Uh, are there market conditions that might impact our cost management? Are there currency exchange rates, for example? Published commercial information that we can get databases or information on costs and project management information that, we have, uh, that we've either got from this project or other projects as our lessons learned. And organizational process assets or templates could be financial controls procedures existing in an organization. You know, do you have to abide by certain measures or certain control procedures? Historical information and lessons learned from other projects. Financial databases, you know, are, there, are there certain parameters that we can assign to costs easily and quickly? And existing formal and informal cost estimating and budget, budgeting related policies, procedures or guidelines. We'll need, as our tools and techniques, expert judgment. So this expert judgment could be for previous similar projects, for our analogous estimating on costs. Information in the industry, discipline, or the application area. 
So who's delivering a particular item and do, can they give an estimate on the cost and that sort of thing. Cost estimating and budgeting itself and earned value management to see if things are going on track or off track. Data analysis needs to be done as well. So we could be looking at alternatives analysis. Alternatives analysis would be reviewing uh, options, so funding options like self-funding. Do we need to self-fund or do we need to fund with debt or equity? Uh, and it can also have uh, consideration to either making the item or purchasing the item or even renting or leasing the item. So if we're going to make, uh, make the item, this is where our make or buy analysis comes into it. So if it, if so, and, and our payback period as well. So if something is going to take, uh, you know, cost a million dollars to make, um, and then, or it's going to cost uh, 500,000 to purchase, then on the outset, that looks like the better deal to purchase the item. But if the ongoing costs for our purchased item are say $500,000 a month, um, and we've got 500 and 500, 500 again, uh, then all of a sudden it doesn't look as good of an option, especially if when we make it, it only costs 100,000 and 100,000 here and 100,000 here. So now we can see that our payback period, if we wanted to make this after about the second or third month, we'd actually be even or ahead if we had made it in the first place. So that is something to be aware of and just to consider um, in your make or buy analysis. Meetings as well. We'll need to hold meetings, planning meetings to develop the cost management plan. Attendees might include the project manager, project sponsor, the selected project team members and stakeholders, or anyone with responsibility for project costs. Now the outputs for planning cost management is the project management plan itself. And the plan will establish these things, units of measure. So how are we measuring the cost? The level of precision, so is it quite accurate or is it just still a, a, an order of magnitude estimate at this stage, is it quite wide? The level of accuracy, organizational procedure links, so the templates that we've used or any formal processes that we've had to go through. Control thresholds, uh, reporting formats, rules of performance measurement. So how are we going to be controlling and measuring this over time? And any ad additional details, so strategic funding choices that have come through, procedure to account for fluctuations in currency exchange rates. So do we need to put a hedge on the currency or do we need to put a particular contingency in the contract if we are actually having fluctuating currency or a long project time. So all of those things will go into how we're managing the cost and that's the cost management plan. And those are all the details as part of planning cost management from the project management body of knowledge.